So for the case of a piecewise constant velocity, we can turn that information of velocity as a function of time into a plot of position as a function of time up to a constant. So let's see how we will do that. So in the first second, we don't know that value for the initial position. Uh, so let's just assume that is zero and we know that the plot would be correct up to a constant which would move it along the y-axis. So let's assume that at t equals zero, the, vol the position is equal to zero. So we're plotting here the position in meters. So we're starting from x equals zero. Now the plot of the velocity versus time being constant at one meter per second for one second, that tells us that the slope of the position versus time plot is going to have to be one meter per second. So if you add the line, it's going to be it's going to be a straight line. So a straight line with a slope of one, and it's going to keep that for one second. So since delta x is equal to v delta t, then the first delta x, if you want to call that, if you call this value of velocity v1, this v2, this value v3, this value v4, then delta x1 is going to be v1 times delta t. So delta x1 is going to be 1 times 1 is 1. So if we're starting from 0, the change in position is going to be 1 meter. So we know that it's a straight line that takes us all the way up to 1 meter. Right? Because this is going to be equal to 1 meter per second multiplied by 1 second. That's equal to 1 meter. So the final, in the interval number 1, the final position minus the initial position in interval number one is going to have to be equal to one meter. So we do not know what's the initial position of the particle that has not been specified, but if we assume it to be equal to zero, then the final position at the end of interval number one, the position of the particle is going to have to be one meter. Now we move on to the second interval which has a velocity of 2 meters per second. So what that tells us is that delta x2 delta x2 is going to be equal to 2 meters per second multiplied by the length of the interval. It goes from 1 second to 2 seconds, so the length is 1 second. So that is 2 meters. So in the second interval, the difference in position is going to have to be 2 meters since at the end of the first interval we were at one meter then at the end of the second interval we're gonna have to be at a position of one plus two that is three so the slope now it's steeper and it takes us all the way from one to three because this is two meters now for the third interval we have a velocity of minus one. So now the slope is going to be negative minus one. And the change in position for the third interval is going to have to be minus one meters per second multiplied by, and then specify the time here, let's say that that's three seconds, multiply by three minus two, and that's one second. So this is minus one meters. So that means that you're going to drop one meter during that interval of time. So you're moving from two, from three, sorry, at the beginning of the interval three meters, you're gonna move down to two meters. You're dropping one meter over that interval. So that's where you are at the end of that interval. The last interval, the fourth interval, yeah, interval has a velocity of 0 0.5. So delta x4 it's going to be v4, which is 0 0.5 meters per second, multiplied by 1 second, difference between 4 seconds and 3 seconds, 
and that gives you 0 0.5 meters so from here you go up by 2 by 0 0.5 meters so if you're starting at here at 2 you must end up at 2.5 And after four seconds, the velocity is zero, which means that the position does not change anymore. So that means it remains constant. So just to make it more clear, thicker line, position as a function of time should look like this. And again, we don't know if the position of the object at t equals zero was zero or some other number that is not specified in it. In a problem, typically that would some condition will be given that uh, for the value of the initial position of the object, which would mean that you would this plot you would move it up or move it down to make the initial uh, condition match what's given in the problem. If the problem says that the object starts at x equal 1, for example, then your plot will have to move 1 meter up to make sure that at t equals 0, your plot is starting here. So this is what would be the answer to the problem. The plot will need to be moved 1 meter up.